in the beautiful Hawaiian Islands, where the world's top pros in the sport of bodyboarding have assembled to compete in the ninth annual Maury Boogie World Bodyboard Championship on ESPN. Six-time world champion Mike Stewart will be defending his title against a field of world-class opponents. Names like Ben Severson, Pat Caldwell, Kainoa McGee, and many others will be vying for a purse of $20,000, with $6,000 going to today's winner. With clean 8 to 10 foot conditions, the next half hour will prove to be a classic bodyboarding experience, so stay with us for the Maury Boogie World Bodyboarding Championship. Turn on the radio, and the first thing I heard was high surf advisories for the north shore of Oahu. Now, that's bad news for tourists, but it is real good news for bodyboarders. A high surf warning means big waves, and big waves means excitement. Hi, everybody. I'm Mike Chamberlain, and welcome to the Maury Boogie World Championships of the Bonsai Pipeline on the north shore of Oahu. Joining me on the program today is Jay Real. We're lucky to have Jay. Jay was a competitor heading into the competition, but he got knocked out early. So, uh, bad news for the competitor, Jay Real, but good news for the broadcaster. We're happy to have you with us today. Jay, talk about it. You had first-hand experience on the water today. What are the conditions like here at the Bonsai Pipeline? Well, if you could sum it up in one word, I'd have to say challenging. Uh, definitely not the normal perfect conditions that you might expect at Pipeline, which is when we have a westerly swell direction. Today we have a bit of a northerly swell direction, providing what I like to call a dog leg left on the waves. It's uh, making it very difficult to get the long open tube. So wave savvy really plays a big part. Those who are more experienced at Pipeline will do best and will get the best waves with the big barrels. Jay, we do have the best in the world. This is truly a world competition. 16 countries are represented here today, and they're all gunning for one man. You might say there's a bounty on this guy's head. Mike Stewart is going for his seventh world title here today. He's won the last four straight, so I guess they're all gunning. They'd have to for Mike Stewart, born in California, raised here in Hawaii. Well, he's known as the most formidable competitor in the sport of bodyboarding. I've been competing here at the pipeline for eight years now. This is my ninth year in this competition. Mike's been in it every year, and I'll tell you, from that first year everybody knew that he was going to be the man to beat in the future and he's done it as you mentioned six times going for seven this year and he's just the man at the pipeline he's out here every day he knows the spot it's basically his backyard and without question the man to beat here at pipeline Jay, right about now, it's time to introduce the third member of our broadcast team, Betty DiPolito. She's very familiar with the waves on the North Shore. She's a professional surfer. She's handling the beach duties for us today, and she's going to check in with conditions right now. Thanks, guys. Well, Pipeline has come through for the competitors again today. We have a really nice swell, kind of a north-northwesterly. We're hoping for some good tube rides later on. That swell was generated from a storm off the coast of Japan, so we have a pretty decent direction, although Pipeline does handle a westerly better. But with this side shore wind, a little a little bit of choppiness. We do expect some good tube rides later on. And Jay, we're going to take a look back on the semifinals in just a few seconds, but I would assume as a competitor, when you go from a prelim to a quarter to a semi, the stress factor, the, the pressure on you gets bigger and bigger with every every jump you make. Well, Mike, it's an exponential rise in stress out there. Uh, as you advance on, you get more and more stress, not only because of uh, worrying about how you're going to do, but you're at the mercy of a lot of elements out there. There's the waves. You have to worry if you're going to be in the right spot at the right time, if the best waves are going to come to you, and if you're going to be able to perform the maneuvers on the wave because not every wave breaks the same so definitely stress increasing heavily for these competitors as we get closer to the final rounds okay with that in mind we're going to take a look back on the semifinals i'm going to the dictionary to find out what exponential actually means here we go semifinals from the bonsai pipeline okay our winner today will come from one of these two brackets right now we're going to center on semi-final number one lance and ron quilio mike stewart ben severson and pat caldwell here's the man of the hour mike stewart paddled out to the bonsai pipeline ben severson right behind him and here's ron quilio and it got underway with a great looking wave for the multi-world champion mike stewart who dropped into a good looking barrel pulled off a magnificent power roll right through the back of the lip into a belly spin, so Mike Stewart kind of setting the tone early in this semifinal. Well, he definitely performed excellently. Textbook performance here, perfect tube, comes out of the tube, El Rolo. Those are the kind of waves that really push you on to the finals here at the pipeline, and the spinner to complete the wave, so doing well. And Lance and Ron Quilio, a newcomer here to the North Shore scene, doing really well, impressing a lot of people out there. Big maneuvers like that took him on into the advancement. And here's Pat Caldwell talking about how he prepares for competition. Well, I try to keep my energy up, drink a lot of liquids, and um, just take it easy on the beach and, and try to focus on my next heat. Just surf my own heat and concentrate on what I'm doing and not worry about what everyone else is doing. That's what I got to do. 
It sounds easy to say, but you know that he was looking over his shoulder at guys like Mike Stewart performing the aerial El Rolo into a belly spin. you got to believe he's looking at this going on, Jay. Well, he managed to dazzle the judges throughout the day. You can see in that semifinal, did the same. Lance and Ron Quilio, no fear at all in those semifinal rounds going for the big wave. And then Ben Severson decided to make a late try at a comeback, and he was riding on the edge, almost out of control, into the belly spin at the end of that wave. And here's another look at Ben Severson. He gets totally wrapped up in the tube this time. And Ben Severson could do no wrong as the first semifinal started to draw to a close. He was happy. And Pat Caldwell couldn't help but notice that Severson and Mike Stewart were going off of the pipeline. So he, too, tried to make a late run. But Ben Severson was getting tube after tube. He was on fire at the pipeline. And he talked about the conditions here on the North Shore of Oahu. Things are kind of good now. There's some good days earlier. It was just terrible. I wasn't. I was going to go and surf Aokai if they would let me. But now, um, now there's getting some good waves, so it should be a good final. And Mike Stewart, the wave magnet, always finding the big ones, carving off the bottom, hitting the lip, those rollos, taking him through that heat. He is a wave master, is he not? Lance and Ron Quilio had one last flash to try and make it into the finals. It was a good-looking wave as he went into this final belly spin, but he realized he wasn't going on. But Mike Stewart and Ben Severson will advance to the finals. Between the two of them, seven world titles, but Mike Stewart happens to own six of them. And before he went out today, he told us that he might have a few maneuvers up his sleeve. Well, I've been practicing on a couple different things, but so far, it hasn't really been that conducive for it. Uh, it's just, it's been kind of, uh, I don't know, it just hasn't really been quite right. And it's, since they're so new, they're hard to pull off in, in all, you know, different conditions. But, uh, I don't know, I'm working on a few new things. Can you tell us about it? Yeah, I could, but then I'd probably have to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> no. Hmm, the Terminator. We'll be back to the North Shore of Oahu for semi number two as the Mori Boogie World Bodyboard Championship continues. A Brazilian, a Hawaiian, and a Californian. McKinsey, Tomega, McGee, and Cameron Steele from San Clemente, California. And Tomega came out to shoot first in a nice little pipeline barrel there. Not a big wave, but he sure pulled off a lot of belly spins. And Cameron Steele carrying the flag for the mainland contingent. Not a lot of experience at the pipe, but definitely finding the good wave. And out of Brazil, this is Guilherme Tomega, and he's going to find a nice little section, gets completely locked inside the green room that time, and came out the other end. Look how he gets those spins out, but here it is in slow motion. Ducks under that curtain of white water, and then will peek his head out the other side. That's great riding. That's what the judges want to see. And Steve McKenzie from Australia carving around the section, finding hollow waves like he does at his home break in um, Maroubra, Australia, performing some open face maneuvers as well. Kainoa McGee rode a fine line between control and disaster. That was it as he kissed the lip and then ducked under this nice little green white wall. Look at this, Jay. How close can you get to being out of control? Well, absolute control out there at Pipeline. Kainoa McGee showing his years of experience. Digs his legs in at the bottom. And Kainoa again drops into a deep barrel. This thing spitting on his back, and he had the presence of mind to pull off a power roll. And El Rolo and then got bashed by the white one. Cameron Steele once again carving off the bottom, a forward spinner, and doing those maneuvers well in the semifinals. Sometimes Cameron rides backwards more than he rides forward. Here is Kainoa McGee one more time. Look how deep he's locked into this one. Oh, and a big barrel roll he pulled off there. So he was in complete control in semifinal number two. And that's the name of the game at the Bonsai Pipeline. Kainoa McGee deeply pitted in this barrel. And another look shows the composure to do an El Rolo as he comes out of the tube. That's as good as it gets on the North Shore of Hawaii in the Bonsai Pipeline. Here's Steve McKenzie from Australia. And as you look at him ride again, he's wearing protective headgear. The coral is just below the surface here at the Bonsai Pipeline. And many a surfer, many a bodyboarder have left some skin on the bottom. And Tamaga, a rookie out of Brazil this year, turned enough heads on the North Shore to impress the judges. He will advance on for the biggest wave of the day. Closed out semi-final number two. Kainoa McGee talked about the big one he couldn't let slip by. It was the biggest set of the heat looked like. Uh, knew I wasn't going to make it, but I had to go. Couldn't let the wave go to waste. So Kainoa McGee will win semi-final number two, and he will advance along with Tamega. So it is Stewart, Severson, Tamega, and McGee with a date in the finals. Women also compete in professional bodyboarding, and as the numbers grow, women continue to make their impact. But I, I think if I watch the women bodyboard and then I watch the men, and out of all the sports I've ever seen, the comparison, it's been the closest, you know? Um, I guess because I feel that it, it's more of a female sport, just because it's so much more graceful and it's easy. 
I'd like to see more women doing I'm really involved in promoting this sport. I've been promoting the, the second annual Women's World Bodyboarding Championships. It's the only concept pipeline. I think that I think it has a really bright future. It's, it's such a wonderful sport. It's, um, it's easy to do, but it can, can be taken to high levels, so it's, it's for everybody. And um, I, I foresee a day when there's just as many women bodyboarding as men. You really have to be really aggressive, especially in this male-dominated profession, because I guess you know, sponsors lean more towards the men because they are more marketable, which is clear for everyone to see. But she's just going to really have to try and really work for what she wants. All right, Jay, we're just about set for the finals of the bodyboard championship here in Hawaii. Now, to the victor, not only goes the actual title itself, but you also walk away with a check for $6,000. You know each of these four guys pretty well. Talk about them individually. Well, there, of course, there's Mike Stewart. He's the champion six times at this event, and uh, he has won virtually every title possible in the bodyboarding world. He's well-respected out here at the Bonsai Pipeline by surfers and bodyboarders alike. And Ben Severson, his nemesis over the past few years, 1986 champion here at the Pipeline, and he's out there every day practicing with Mike. And, of course, you have quite a lineup here with guys like Guillermo Tamago, rookie out of Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. And he's doing well on the North Shore this winter, so we should look for some big maneuvers from him as well. And, of course, Kainoa McGee, one of the protégés of Mike Stewart. He's not afraid to go for the big, mean ones out there. These are four of the best in the business of bodyboarding, and there's your lineup for the final. Stewart, Tomega, McGee, and Severson. And it's all about to get underway. Look at the size of these waves pumping in right now, Jay. Absolutely incredible here. It's really gotten good for the finals here, and Mike Stewart taking the first wave, drawing first blood and instantly finds that deep barrel, and the judges are going to be impressed with this one, a big El Rolo as he comes out of the tube, and really, really setting the pace here for the final round already. Well, the judges want to see radical maneuvers and get everything out of the way possible. Kainoa McGee, deep in the pocket, unbelievable trim, and he just goes into Niagara Falls, and it's a white water delight from here on in. He is lost. He's a cork bouncing around, but he's happy to come out of this thing alive. You can see his right hand go up in victory, so he's happy just to continue on in this contest. That was a big wave. Well, talking about big waves, Ben Severson leaning into this left-hander, and what a deep hit this one's going to turn out to be. Oh, it just belches him right out of the tube there, flies up into the air, comes down to the whitewater, surrounded by cascading plumes of whitewater. Here it is again as he goes deep into the pocket, lost in the barrel, the spray all around him, trying to clear his eyes of his hair, so Ben Severson with a very high scoring wave, they give him an 80 on that wave, Jay, not bad. Well, already this heat off to an incredible start. Guillermo Tamaga of Brazil, not one to be outdone, and he takes off on this way, pulls in, big rollo there, and a lot of guts for such a youngster, a rookie once again out of Brazil. Guillermo showing no fear out there. It's amazing. You think that these guys, as a rookie, would be intimidated by one of the biggest, toughest, most feared waves in all of the world, but Guillermo, the rookie, was right in position. You can see the belly spins and then lines up for the pocket charge, blasts through the backside of the lip, so Guillerme is just making his presence felt here at the Bonsai Pipeline. Wow. We'll be back with more bodyboarding from the North Shore after this. Welcome back, everybody, to bodyboarding on ESPN. Our four top competitors are in the water, and the waves seem to be increasing here at the Mori Boogie World Bodyboard Championships on the North Shore of Oahu. So we continue with our finals. And out in the water, I can see Kainoa McGee is locking and loading Good board speed as he leans into a hard lefty. We lose him. There he is. He pops out the other side of it like a cork and continues to ride this wave. And now he's double hopping into almost a shore break. He's going to try once again for the cover-up. Back-to-back cover-ups for Kainoa McGee. And that is one pump young bodyboarder. And Guillermo Tamega from Brazil. A deep, deep tube there. Comes out. Big carve out on the open face. And this youngster from Brazil holding no punches, uh, really doing well out there. This is the ninth year this contest has been held, and sports director of promotion for Maury Boogie Bodyboards, 
Mary Lee Christensen says there's no reason to believe it won't continue in the future. Absolutely. Uh, we, this is our ninth year of international competition. We began in 1982 with the first event that drew competitors from several countries. And now here in 1991, we have competitors from six continents and 16 countries competing. We're up from just the 36 competitors up to 84 competitors now, with a cash purse that's grown at this point up to $20,000 and $6,000 to the first place finisher. And yes, we will continue doing it with the kind of response we've had internationally we know there are other countries who are interested in participating next year so we'll certainly respond to that and next year being the 10th annual we'll probably have some pretty special things happening as well and i think mary's words are indicative of how fast this sport is exploding talk about exploding look at this mike short an enormous wave of the pipeline big hard cut at the bottom over the top oh my he lands after hanging in the air for about three and a half seconds you can see his hand go up at victory, and Jay Real, it doesn't get any better than that. Well, I think that was the secret maneuver that he was talking about earlier. Absolutely astounding maneuver. Picks off the biggest wave of the heat. Just incredible, and we'll have to take another look at that one. That was just mind-boggling. And Mike Stewart dropping into this massive pit, the thing heaving with Pacific power on the reef, launches it up, totally airborne comes down, lands hard, and pulls it off. He is totally stoked on that one. Did you see that score? A 99 he received on this. And when he lands, his chest hit the board so hard, you'd think that he would lose his breath, but he showed up on satellite maps all over the country. Weathermen having to explain this, this little dot on their weather map. Okay, Ben Severson, the world champion back in 1986, gonna go for the cover-up, and barrel roll, and another. They say that the combos are what's gonna be the decade of the 90s, putting back-to-back -back maneuvers and Ben Severson doing it to perfection. Didn't get the big wave and the huge pit that Mike Stewart got, but still a couple of nice moves. And really showing composure here, coming out of the tube, one maneuver, another El Rolo, and a, and a second El Rolo there. Just not quite as big of a wave as Mike Stewart had, but three great maneuvers. From Brazil, Guillermo Tomega, he's locking into a good-looking lefty here. A lot of open face to deal with. Bam! Bashes it off the white water. Hits the lip to perfection, then goes into a belly spin. He's still working this wave over, so that had to impress the judges. A couple of radical maneuvers and still squeezing a lot out of it. And Kainoa McGee trying for one of these backdoor barrels again. Totally disappears from view, pops out, and another cover up here. Just logging some tube time. Boy, he's going to have to pay rent and he's been spending <laughs> so much time in there. He is logging some serious time in the tube. Great board speed, super trim by Kanoa McGee, and a good looking wave. So he's going to climb back on that bodyboard and force his way out through the lineup right now here at the Bonsai Pipeline on the north shore of Oahu. Okay, we're about halfway through the contest. Here's how it stands. This is a little bit misleading. Kainoa McGee has the lead. McGee and Tomega each have three waves. Stewart and Severson only two waves apiece, but that wave by Stewart was almost near perfect, 99 out of a possible 100. Well, here we go. Trying to tap into the latter part of this heat. The energy out there. Ben Severson indeed does exactly that. Pulls into a tube, another El Rolo. So the tube ride El Rolo combination seeming to be the point getters out here today. And look at that white water churning as they near the shore. And one more time, Ben Severson with a big power roll. And his white jersey almost gets lost in that explosion of white water as he paddles back out to the lineup now. Ben Severson, a former world champion, trying to put another title under his belt. Mike Stewart, big, hard, left-hand turn. Oh, and a bash off the top. Still in control. Unbelievable belly spin in the white water. So it's an unbelievable story here of poise and balance for the six-time world champion Mike Stewart. This is his backyard, Jay. He owns this break. It's just that simple. Well, it sure is, and he, I think, knows that Tainoa McGee is slightly ahead, so he's going to have to pull out those big maneuvers, and we saw him do it there. He's always one to come from behind if he's not doing well, and he indeed is doing exactly that here. Nice little set pouring through right now. I think it is Guillerme Tomega who is going to go into a blasting blue wall, comes out the other side. It's a pretty sight, isn't it? The green blue water on the north shore of Hawaii that swallows up Tomega and spits him out like he's a toothpick, but he's near that bodyboard. He is the only one of the three that actually has a cord attached to the board. The other guys, like this guy, Ben Severson, they're out there all on their own. Now, Ben Severson, a chance to make up some lost ground, gets a little cover-up. Ooh, pulls up a bit high on that spinner, somehow pulls that off. 
And not really a big points getting wave, I'm afraid. Okay, we continue on. Kainoa McGee paddling, scratching, and he's going to bury himself under this wall of white water. Oh, he can't come out. The oh, he does. Unbelievable wave. You can hear the crowd in the background and a power roll to sign it off. Unbelievable. Jay, I wrote him off. There was no way I thought he was going to come out this wall. Well, you had to. It's just completely white water. The tube just engulfed with whitewash. He pops out somehow, and I think he has a chance at this one. And here's Ben Severson, his fourth wave. He's getting upside down. He was tail over tea kettle for a second there. Meanwhile, to make it, his fourth wave scored only 63 points. We are in the final seconds now of the final itself. Kainoa McGee taking off the fins. You know, it's his day is over. But there is one man in the lineup that could close this out in fine fashion. And always wanted to finish up in grand style. Oh, Mike Stewart with a beautiful wave. Whoa! Big El Rolo for Mike Stewart. And he's really finishing off well here. Another Rolo. So in the closing seconds of the heat, Mike Stewart clinching what perhaps could be his seventh victory. Unbelievable. Ben Stewart, obviously not happy with his performance today, but Mike Stewart was attacking the Bonsai pipeline like I've never seen him do before. Here he comes into the shoreline. He looks full of confidence. You may believe that he thinks he's got this under his belt as he goes by Tomega and looks at him. I know the key, all the competitors coming in at the moment. But when I think back on this contest in years to come, I will remember this one big maneuver by Mike Stewart. He hit the pocket like a locomotive and the white water thundered around him. We'll be right back with the winner. All right, our congratulations go out to Mike Stewart. He is $6,000 richer and has put his seventh world title under his belt. Mike, think back to the first one and the seventh, and is there any difference? Is this still a thrill, or has it become old hat, so to speak? No, every year it's, you know, it's harder to win it. It was a lot harder this year than it was the last few years, so this win's a really big one for me, and I'm really, you know, really stoked that I won it. Isolate one way for us, Mike, the one where you're out of the water by about 15 or 20 feet, right place at the right time again. Yeah, it was one of the bigger sets, and, you know, I wanted to, to really hit it and do a big move, so I just went for it. You know, I didn't know if I was going to make it or not, but I just went for it. All right, great way to start the year off with a victory, another world title, and $6,000. For Betty and for Jay Real, I'm Mike Chamberlain. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you next year from the North Shore of Oahu at the Bonsai Pipeline. Bye-bye, everybody. Accommodations in Hawaii have been provided by the Turtle Bay Hilton and Country Club.